Welcome again. Uh, today it's uh, we're gonna do a, a quick tutorial about just the simplest and easiest way to connect your uh, equipment to Prism and you know set up for an evening. Just uh, play solve, focus, and uh, find a target image. So today I'm connected through uh, Mr. Bob Sennis's um, system in Chile, and this system is a 14-inch Newtonian. QSI 532 and a Nova 120. Uh, here's the system in Chile uh, right now. So we're going to do a just a quick rundown. So for this one, I have the uh, the clamshell open, which is the type of observatory it is. It open both sides open, and uh, I have power turned on. So let's connect our camera. Uh, this icon up here. That'll connect the QSI 532 and its internal filter wheel and connect the rest which is the uh, the actual mount the uh, and the focuser so press that button the focuser connects first and then the mount it's going back to a 3.09 millimeter which is the reference position for the luminous filter with the uh, um, optic focuser that is in place. Now the telescope is connecting. Here we go. There we are. So this is our filter wheel. Let's minimize this. We'll leave the focuser up here. So to embark your mount go into the telescope control and execute and embark okay when this is grayed out that means it embarked successfully let's minimize this so a uh, quick slew to somewhere around here and let's go and see what what we have so uh, a, a quick way to do this is to right click and slow telescope to this point. There's a little bit of delay because it's a few thousand miles away. There we go, slowing is done. So let's take an image and see what is going on in there. Take a f five second, two by two. And see what we have. All right, here's the image. I'm going to darken this a little bit. See what we have. All right, it doesn't seem that the telescope is focused I think these stars are rather bloated let's measure them yes the seven arc seconds across all right let's so let's focus um, quick way observatory focus in actions and automatic focusing and the crosshairs are here to tell you that prism is looking for a target to focus on so let's, let's select the same star you want to use three, uh, five seconds with the QSI five three two, the optic focuser continue yes, and execute. This is fairly simple. So it'll send the focuser to the star position, which is two point seven eight, and then now it's going to take a dark frame to subtract it from the subsequent frames, and it's going to start focusing. So the first one is blank, which is normal. This is if, if your camera has a, uh, a shutter. If it doesn't, then that step is uh, bypassed. So the first image, it's going to have a defocused star, which is quite big when this is normal, because we're going to start big, and then it's going to start getting smaller and smaller and smaller 
to reach the sharpest point and then it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger uh, which is this is what we refer to as a v curve something to note is that prism calculates your critical focus step automatically based on this information below the system focal length the, the diameter of the telescope in millimeters and the pixel size this is what this optimized step button is for it'll actually calculate this for you and then the optimized gap is every system has a gap where it focuses uh, this telescope for example focuses around 3.2 millimeters so when you press optimize gap Prism will give you six steps on one side, six steps on the other side, using this focuser step in millimeter automatically. So here's our focus run. The optimum focus has been found at 3.305 with an HDF of 3.3 pixels and a 0 0.2 pixel of fit error. So let's look at this real quick so this is the v curve from that run as expected the star at this point 2.7 some millimeters when we move the focuser at first the hdf was north of 14 and then it, the star got sharper and sharper and sharper over time and over the focus positions they're moving because we're moving from 2.7 all the way to close uh, past 3.6 as the focuser mo moves the star is getting smaller and then bigger 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 and bigger this is textbook v curve for the system all right now our system is focused let's take another five second exposure bin two by two I think the image is a little bit um, bright so let's uh, dim it a little bit yes it is let's do 99.9 much better all right much better image sharp and small stars now okay now the system is telling us we're here So let's go say to this galaxy right here, M104. So you double click on it, gives you all the information about it, and you say slew telescope to this object right here. All right, now let's take an image, five seconds, two by two bidding, to see where we at. If everything goes well, we should be centered on this galaxy, which is M104. All right, so here's the image. I don't see a galaxy, so let's, to be sure, let's just plate solve in sync. Perform image center plate solve with software embedded function. Press OK. It found 2384 stars in that image. So calibration was successful. Recalibrate telescope array index position to this to, to the position found by the plate solve engine. Yes, this is a sink. So yes. How we know this? Our focal length is good and the confidence index is good. So let's zoom onto this, the position where, where it's at. So we this is the actual position of the telescope and the galaxy is right next door. So let's double click, tell it to move there. Let's take a 10 second exposure, bin two by two. And there is the galaxy, dead center. 
this is M104. So from here, you can go to manual sequence and take some images manually as you watch the telescope, M104, if you wish. You can set up your exposure time, your binning, the number of exposures, and your filter. And you can do this for uh, a lot of other filters by adding this like this. And you can do LRGB if you wish, LRG and B. You can do 12, 12, and 12. And you can enable dither and guide in at the same time. But if you want a more advanced way of doing this, the automatic observation is the way to go. Or control T. You can input M104 here. Ask it to find you the coordinates very, very simply. And amount of images of 12. You can perform auto gating and perform focusing. And then here you can do an LRGB from these. That simple. So this was a quick rundown of what you do it in an evening. Quick steps, really easy. Since Prism has all the tools built in, you don't need to leave the this, this same software. Just one package to do it all. Hope you like this. Hope it helps you. And if you have any questions, please comment below or go to my website, please. And then go to the forum. Join. It's open to everyone. And if you have questions, please ask them there and we'll be happy to answer anything for you. Thank you very much. Clear skies and have an outstanding evening.